This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Right next to you, this is Mr. Mr. Calvin. Yeah, they uh, called me Flying Calvin in 1952. The Smithsonian Institution of History gave me that, gave my picture playing after hours blues in midair. Wow. Flying Calvin in 1952. And they used it for their rock and soul museum after I threw the ball to the king of rock and roll. After that, they put Flying Calvin in the Rock and Soul Museum. And rock and roll flourished all over the world. Yes, sir. That's excellent. I'm going to talk to you. I know you all from your brother, the finest newborn, the jazz piano the great, you said the greatest musician the world has ever known. And I was going to ask you this guy had talked to a sister named Ruby Carter, who mom was George That's Woodruff, a uh, music teacher oh, and a gospel singer. And, and, and she you, said that you up George and Woodruff I, I actually trained your brother and gave him lessons. That was it. That was it. That was it. That was it. She you was my brother and, and my first yourself. piano you teacher. Miss mm -hmm. Georgia Woodruff. I know Ruby well. I remember when she was very young. And uh, my brother was the only student she had who could play piano better than his teacher. She, uh, my brother was a teenager and she set up a recital for him at the Memphis Fine Arts Society. The black uh, fine arts, and he played a concert. And when he finished, she told the audience that he was the only student she had that could play as well as her. And somebody in the audience said, "He's the only student you've had that plays better than you." Mm. He surpassed his teacher. And as a matter of fact, when he went to college at Tennessee State, they couldn't teach him anything because he had already acquired all of the abilities that they could teach him. So the director of music wrote a letter to the Juilliard School of Music and s telling them that he belonged there where he could study music. 